what if the property or the area that you want to monitor doesn't have electricity or Wi-Fi? Well, we have the Reolink Duo and this is the 4G version and it uses a cellular data connection using a SIM card. Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today we will check out another version of the Reolink Duo, which I've reviewed their wired PoE and Wi-Fi versions a while back, which overall are pretty good cameras. Then I reviewed their Wi-Fi battery version a few videos ago, and I was a bit disappointed at the performance of its PIR motion sensor, which because it is battery powered, it uses this type of sensor, and it is not sensitive in detecting motion if it is going towards the camera. It either starts recording late or sometimes not able to pick up the motion at all. This 4G version that we will check out also uses this type of sensor, and I was already set during testing that this camera will also perform like the battery powered Wi-Fi one. Well, keep on watching and you'll be surprised like I am. This is a specialized camera and this is not really for home security because I'm pretty sure you have electricity and internet connection at home. And Wi-Fi based cameras or wired NVR IP cameras would be a cheaper and better choice. But if you have a ranch or property or you are a construction builder and you want to monitor an area for short term or long term, then this system would be perfect for that. This also you can consider as a smart trail camera because it is battery and solar powered and it doesn't need Wi-Fi and as long as you have cellular signal. And you'll be able to be notified in real time when somebody triggers the camera and you can download the footage without you going back on the trail. I will link down below my review videos of the other types of Reolink Duo cameras if you haven't seen it yet. Also, if you find this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you and I appreciate it. Thank you Reolink for sending me this 4G camera with solar panel bundle to be reviewed. This is the 4G mobile dual lens camera from Reolink. It doesn't use Wi-Fi but uses cellular 4G LTE connection using a SIM card, which you will need to purchase. And supported carriers here in the US are T-Mobile and Vodafone. There is also the EIOT club which reached out to me at a perfect timing which they specialize in these SIM card data plans for security cameras, trail, pet, or GPS trackers. And their SIM cards are compatible with Reolink. Also thank you EIOT club for the SIM card and for the plan so I'll be able to test this camera. With EIOT club you start out with their $5 300 megabyte trial just to get the SIM card to you and test it with your camera. 300 megabytes is not a lot, so if it works with your camera, then you can refill it, depending on your need. So there is a 30-day plan for $10, and it has a 2 gigabyte data limit. And this expires in 30 days, even if you don't use the full 2 gigabytes. I guess if you're using the camera for long-term use, like in a ranch or in a property where there's no access to electricity and internet, then the $100 a year, 24 gigabyte data plan will be a better option. But if you're just using this as a trail camera for short-term use, then you can sign up for the cheaper option. You can always check and refill your plan without needing to remove or change the SIM card on their website. I will link their website in the description down below. Back to the camera, just a quick overview of the features. This is a dual lens camera, two camera lenses, and merging their field of view results in a 150 degree viewing angle. It records in 2K quality at 15 frames per second. It has AI person and vehicle detection. It has spotlights, a total of 8 LEDs, and can record in full color at night. It has a built-in rechargeable 10,400 mAh battery and can be continually charged using a solar panel, which is included in this bundle. It records locally to a microSD card up to 128GB card, and there is also an optional cloud recording. This is weatherproof with an IP66 rating. Inside the box, we have some paperwork. Then we have the two antennas and the solar panel with a quarter 20 screw thread on the back. It has a 13 foot cable already attached and has a micro USB plug to plug into the camera. It comes with an extra long mount, mounting screws and plastic anchors. And we have the camera itself which is identical to the battery powered Wi-Fi one. We have the PIR motion sensor here and we have the dual camera lenses. We have four spotlights and three infrared LEDs on each lens. We have the light sensor here and the mic. On top, we have the Quartet 20 screw mount which we also have one on the bottom. And we also have the speaker. On the sides, we have the screw in mounts for the antennas. On the back, there is a rubber flap that covers the micro USB port to charge the batteries. It also comes with a short micro USB cable another set of mounting screws and plastic anchors, 
and a strap if you want a screwless install and strap the camera in a tree limb or in a pipe or pole. We have a Phillips driver and we have the camera mount that comes with a metal bracket. Unscrew the screw holding the plastic piece behind the PIR sensor and you will see a rubber flap that covers the on and off switch, SIM card slot, micro SD card slot and the reset hole. Using the included push pin, push it on the hole of the SIM card holder which it will pop up. Take your SIM card and pop it out to its smallest size. Place it in the holder and put it back in. Insert your micro SD card and I'll charge this and we will set this up. First, turn on the camera. Open up the Reolink app and click the plus sign to add a device. Scan the QR code which is on the back of the camera. Create a device password and click next. Name your device and setup is finished. Time to install this. First, I'll install the solar panel, which I like that the mount is longer so that you can actually install this on air fascia board even if you have rain gutters. Screw in the metal bracket of the camera's mount. Hook the mount and screw it in with the included short machine screw to secure it in place. Hook up and plug in the solar panel on the back of the camera, making sure you push in the rubber sleeve for weatherproofing and screw in the camera on the mount. Hooking up a solar panel is recommended on this setup, but I'll unplug this in my testing just to show you how much battery life it will use with settings set to maximum sensitivity. Let's check out the settings in the app. When you open up the app, you will see a thumbnail with not connected icon on it. Click on it to get to live view, which you will see how long the live view loads up using a 4G connection. And it is a bit longer than a Wi-Fi connected camera. Tilt the phone to view in merge landscape mode. In here, you can start two-way talk, which is full duplex. You can view the recorded footage, and you can even sort out the recordings just for person-detected events. And you will be able to download the footage from here. Back to the live view, you can sound the siren, turn on the spotlights, which will also change the view to full color. And clicking the gear icon will get you to the camera settings. In here, you will see the battery life, which by the way, after three days of testing, that is the battery life from 100%. So highly recommended to hook this up to a solar panel. We have display options and I just want to show one thing here. On advanced, you can sync the brightness on both cameras which helps to have a seamless color and brightness on the footage from both lenses. PIR motion sensor on or off and you can adjust the sensitivity up to 100. Then it has detection alarm which you have motion zones and on this model you have separate motion zones for people and vehicles. Then you can adjust the sensitivity further by people or vehicle motion. We have camera recording and you can set for the camera to record person, vehicle, and or all motion. Which I usually set all of them on mine but in the push notification settings, I just set it for me to be notified for person detected events. And it is pretty reliable like I don't get notified when my dog for example is detected but the motion is still recorded. Let's check out the video in audio quality and do some testing. So this is the video and audio quality of Reolink Duo. This is the 4G version. And video clarity test at 10 feet. 15. 20. 25. 30. Thirty-five, forty. This is the running mat test. <laughs> so this is the video quality of the Reolink Duo, the 4G version at night and this with its spotlights turned on and this is what it looks like at 10 feet 15 20 25 30 of the really duo the 4G version at night and this with the spotlights turned off and the infrared LEDs are turned on and there's six of them and this one looks like at 10 feet 15 20 25 
are going to test the motion alert notification speed of the uh, Rayolink Duo, the 4G version. And I'm on my LTE connection. And let's check it out. Now, uh, you, will s you will witness here that it will have a delayed notification compared to the Wi-Fi, compared to the Rayolink overall. There you go. So there are, there's no rich notifications and when you click on it, it should go to live view. And there's, there you go, not bad. All right, so it just turned 626. Uh, it's been less than a minute. So let's see what the notification uh, cool off for the Reolink Duo 4G version. Yep, notification delay. There you go. See, it's a, it's delayed. That's not normal for real link. I guess it's because um, it is in 4G cellular data. Even loading up the live view, it's okay. It's not as long as it is, but there is a definite delay. Now we are going to test the maximum detection distance for the Relink Duo, the 4G version. And uh, it uses a PIR sensor, so I've set the sensor to the highest sensitivity and also the person to the de detection to the highest sensitivity. Let's go 40 feet. Normally the PIR sensor would only detect around 30 feet. So that is 40 and now 35. Whoa, it did detect me. So we will see. Wow, I'm surprised on that one. I was thinking 30 feet, but it might have detected me at 40 feet. All right, so we are going to test uh, how fast the uh, Relink Duo, the 4G uh, version, can detect me and start recording when the motion is going towards the camera. And this is the weakness of the battery version. And we'll see if it's the weakness of the Duo also, of the 4G version. There's a little bit delay in the notification and uh, it, it detected me. This is the audio quality coming out from the Rearing Duo 4G version. This is the audio quality coming out from the Rearing Duo 4G version. I was really surprised how this camera performed as to its motion detection because it is basically the same design and components as their battery powered Wi-Fi one. And that one didn't fare well in detecting going towards the camera motion. This one though can detect up to 40 feet plus it recorded me every time if I go towards the camera. One thing that I noticed though is that this 4G version has a separate person and vehicle detection sensitivity controls. And this is missing on the battery Wi-Fi version. So I'm hoping that the battery Wi-Fi version's detection can be improved by a firmware update. Video and audio quality are pretty good. Person detection is pretty accurate and it is good that it also has vehicle detection. But I wish it has animal or pet detection too because one thing that they advertise this camera for is as a trail camera. I know they're rolling out pet detection with their other cameras and hopefully this camera will also have this option soon. Notifications and accessing the camera is a bit delayed and it tends to be longer than Wi-Fi cameras. Finally, just a note with 4G cameras because the data usage is being tracked. The cameras will only use the 4G data plan when it sends out a notification when you're accessing the camera on the app, watching live view, downloading the recorded footage, and actively using the camera's features. The detection of motion itself and recording doesn't use data because the camera records locally to its micro SD card. But if you sign up for Reolink's cloud recording, then that will use data too. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.